What can an automobile manufacturer do to help alleviate the greenhouse effect? How much individual mobility can our civilization sustain? Where will the electricity come from that will power the cars we are developing today? What will the energy sources of the future be? What challenges must we face today if we want to make the transition to renewable energy? Here at Audi, these are issues that concern us greatly. Not only are we trying to find the answers, we're already taking concrete steps today. CO2 neutral mobility. Our goal is ambitious without a doubt, but we cannot achieve it alone. As a manufacturer of premium automobiles, we feel it is our duty to take a holistic approach to mobility. Renewable energy refers to energy produced from sources that either renew themselves relatively quickly or which can be exploited without being depleted, like wind energy for example. In 10 years time, nearly 50% of our households will be using energy from renewable sources. Audi is pursuing this goal and will deliver pioneering impulses in the network world of the 21st century. Electric vehicles will run on electricity produced from regenerative sources, like wind energy produced in the North Sea. In the future, Audi will be involved in the construction of wind turbines here. One minute of strong wind here can provide enough power for 300 kilometers of CO2-free travel in our Audi A1 e-tron. The problem will be to find ways to store the energy produced using unreliable resources like solar and wind power. Climate change and the scarcity of resources are forcing us to turn to renewable energy. Wind will play a leading role because it's the most cost-effective form. Its main problem is that it's unreliable. Sometimes the wind just doesn't blow. That's why we have to store the energy in the power grid. But the power grid has a very limited storage capacity. The gas distribution network possesses the largest storage capacity in Germany. So it's only logical that we couple the power and gas networks. This solution is of special interest to us. It's adaptable enough to potentially enable us to fulfill 100% of our energy needs using renewable energy. This vision is not so far from becoming reality. The first test lab for converting wind to methane has been built in Werfel. We will feed the electricity into this facility and turn it into synthetic natural gas. In the first step, water will be broken down into hydrogen and oxygen. In the second step, the hydrogen and CO2 will be converted into synthetic natural gas. This gas will then be stored in the gas distribution network, where we can do a lot of things with it, like drive a vehicle very long distances. Here, once again the path from wind to e-gas. The origin of our energy is the wind from the North Sea. It drives the high-performance offshore windmills that in turn produce energy. The electricity is then stored in the power grid and distributed. It can then be used for the methanization process. It also helps to turn water into hydrogen and to break down oxygen. The hydrogen then reacts with the CO2 from the atmosphere. The e-gas produced can then be fed into the e-gas network and stored. In the future, we will be able to fill up our CNG vehicles, making long-distance CO2 neutral mobility possible. Audi is currently in the concept phase for the construction of a large solar fuel facility capable of producing about 300 times more gas than the small test lab. It will be the first facility in the world to realize the vision of coupling electricity with natural gas. In addition to offering electric vehicles that deliver short-range mobility free of CO2 emissions, Audi will also expand its portfolio to include natural gas-powered vehicles. Beginning in 2013, the new A3 TCNG will be the first vehicle to deliver long-range mobility free of CO2 emissions. I was delighted when I heard about Audi's e-gas project generating wind power out at sea, then storing it in chemical form for use in cars. That sounds like a technically outstanding solution that enables cars genuinely to run with zero impact on the climate. This new technology is capable of producing more electricity for our e-trons, hydrogen for the fuel cell cars of tomorrow, and e-gas for CNG vehicles as needed. And this also enables us to react flexibly to developments as they occur.
So the electricity produced from the North Sea windmills will not only be used in the production of e-gas, but also to directly power our e-trons. We are producing climate-friendly fuels, and a key aspect for me personally, we are fostering a culture within our company that systematically places sustainability at the fore. That is what Audi Balanced Mobility stands for. Soon we'll be able to fuel our cars with CO2 that otherwise would have ended up in the atmosphere. That doesn't clean up the atmosphere, but at least it doesn't contribute more pollution. Audi is facing the challenge.